Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Do you think it'll snow by Thursday, David? Oh, sure. I can smell the snow in the air now. Smell it how? With my nose. But you can't smell snow, can you? You can't smell snow. Well, that, that's a sacrilege. Can't you taste it either? No, my mouth's full of toast. Well, stick your head out of the window after breakfast and find out for yourself. But I guarantee you it will snow by night. I hope you're right. Doubting Thomas. Here, Thomas, give me another cup of coffee. All right, Thomas. David, it's your third cup. Any objections? Of course not. David, how soon do you think we'll go to Chicago? Oh, a few weeks after the New Year, probably. So soon? That's at least a month from now, darling. A month's awfully short, David. Remember, December and January have the shortest days. But they have more of them. Thirty-one. Thirty days past September? Maybe it won't be so soon. <laughs> I really don't know when Mr. Carrington will be ready to get this freight terminal project underway. But I've got an idea. He's an impatient man. Well, I'll be ready when he is. And when you are. If we just have a snowy Christmas in New York, any time after that will be all right, darling. What are you looking for? Matches. Have you got any? I put some on the table with the orange juice. Look under that saucer that's tilting. Mm. Oh, yes, here they are. Honestly, we use that more matches. It's that pipe of yours. Do you begrudge me my pipe? No, oh, no. Why should I? You only spend half your life polishing it or scraping it or looking for it or lighting it. it keeps you so busy you hardly have a chance to smoke it even. Well, a pipe needs a lot of attention. A pipe is like a woman. This woman sometimes wishes she were your pipe. Come here. I'll polish you up a little. I don't trust you. All right, all right. Stay where you are. All right, here I am. Hmm. I like being polished. Now, skadoodle. I want to light my pipe. See what I mean? This dang pipe. What's the matter with it? Who said anything was the matter with it? Nobody. Well, you practically just broke its head on the table. It's bold, darling. How many times do I have to tell you it's bowl? It's bowl? What's the matter with it? Mm. It doesn't draw. Is that all? Maybe something stuck in it. For instance? Tobacco? Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Is this your good pipe? No, my good pipe is broken. And this must be its mate. It's broken, too. Are you starting to sound like a broken record? Haven't you got a pipe that works? Well, I haven't had time to put them into shape. All they need is a little fixing up. You say a pipe is like a woman, don't you? Mm-hmm. Would you bother with a woman for five minutes if she was always broken and useless and lying around collecting dust? What are you driving at? Answer my question, would you? Well, this woman you're talking about is obviously not my kind of woman. Then these are obviously not your kind of pipe. <laughs> David, why don't you throw all your old pipes out the window or make a fire of them? Get yourself a new one? Uh, darling, it's not so easy to get a new pipe. After all, it took me a dozen years to find you. If I threw you out the window or set you on fire, it might take me a dozen more years to find a new wife that would suit me. Do I suit you? Mm-hmm. Tailor-made. Perfect. That's nice. And that's the way I feel about my pipes, thank you. You're welcome. David, where do you buy your pipes? Well, not in a drugstore. I think that your devotion to a pipe is completely blind. You just love it because you have it. Then I just love you because I have you. Come over here. Hmm. It's nice to be your pipe. I mean your wife. <laughs> Where 
are you dragging me in these crowds? We're going to buy David a new woman. What? I mean a pipe. Same thing. What? 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 What's the matter with buying him a pipe? His good one is broken. He doesn't like any of his others. But you don't know anything about them. I found out everything I have to know this morning. For instance? You don't have to know anything. It's all a matter of instinct. David's instinct. I've got instinct, too. Well, you don't have to be so proud of it. So do animals. Where are we going for this pipe? To a pipe store. Really? Which pipe store? It's right on this next block. English and very swanky. I got the name out of David's tobacco. That was very oh. clever. What's the name of this place? Uh, Lang Hill. Look out, Mama! Honestly, you want to get killed? I haven't been killed so far crossing streets. Claudia, let go of my arm. Well, well there's a store on the corner. Ooh, looks very expensive, doesn't it? What do you suppose a good pipe costs? Mm, I don't know. Three dollars? Or maybe five or eight. That much? Well, it does sound like a lot, but it lasts a long time. Mm, that's true. And David gets very devoted to it. Still, I... <gasps> Mama, look at all the pipes in the window. Aren't they stunning? Well, you don't sound as if you're going to enjoy this. I just have a feeling that... That what? That I'm going to wish David smoked cigarettes. Not me. I'm glad he smokes a pipe. Come on in. Uh, good afternoon, madam. Can I be of assistance to you? I want to buy a pipe. Uh, right over this way, please. Go on, Claudia. You're in here now. Go on. He acts as if the last woman who was in this store was Eve. And you know what happened to her. What? Uh, right over here, madam, please. We have quite a varied assortment. Mama, w which one would he like best? You're married to him, not me. Mm, um... He has both. Um... Uh, long stem or short stem? Oh, dear. Uh, round bowl or deep bowl? Uh, I don't know. Uh, dark wood or light wood? Mama, help me. Claudia, I warned you. Are they guaranteed like fountain pens? Uh, they need no guarantee. They are Langhill uh, pipes. Oh. I didn't know buying a pipe could be so complicated. Oh, I wish I were a man for once. I see what you mean. But a man's point of view... Clerk wasn't any help at all. Mama, if I bring home the wrong pipe... It'll... David will still love you. Oh, he'll love me all right. But he'll think I'm a clock. Something new, of course. Mama, look at that man over there. What about him? He's smoking a pipe. So? He looks very distinguished. Like C. Aubrey Smith. I bet he'd know that, what pipe David would want. The way he smokes a pipe, it looks like it grew in his face. What do you intend to do? Read his mind? No, but I... Claudia, whatever you're thinking, forget it. It wouldn't hurt to ask, would it? Ask him? Have you gone mad? I'm just trying to be practical. He looks very nice and understanding. Sort of the way David might look when he grows older. Much older. Claudia, where are you going? Come back here. Oh, that child. A excuse me, but could I... Uh... Uh, yes? C could I ask you for some advice? On a very important matter. Uh, why, of course. What is it? It's about a pipe for my husband. Pipe for, uh, for your husband? Yes. Uh, the first Christmas present. It's very important. How did you know? I mean, that it was the first. You're very young, my dear. Now, what's the problem? Well, you see, I, I, I don't know which one to choose. That is a problem. Where are these pipes? Right over there with my mother. Oh, let me see. Uh, suppose you tell me what your husband is like. Well, he's very tall. Almost as tall as you are. Well, then we don't want too small a pipe. And he's... he's... Very handsome. I know. Well, I think he is. Mama, we've got some help. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my daughter, but... Not at all. I'm delighted. So he's very tall and very handsome and... Uh... Oh, and he's an architect, I forgot to tell you. And he's got a square jaw. The two match very well, I'd say. And I'd say that your husband might favor a straight stem. You do? You think he'd like a straight stem? A straight stem. Now, let me see. Uh, the bowl. Oh, there's something else I forgot to tell you. David always taps the bowl on the table. Mm. Oh, and he rubs it up against his nose to, to, to polish it and... Uh... Oh, he's forever pressing the coals down with his fingers. 
I don't see why he doesn't burn himself. Why, young lady, you're quite a professional about pipes. Well, I have picked up a few things. You can't help it when you... When you love the man who smokes the pipe. Yes. I never noticed pipes before I was married. I hardly even knew they existed. Well, from the image you've given me of both of you, I'd say he'd like a tall bowl. Deep and well-shaped and generous. Do you know what you've done? Described your husband to you. You've described him perfectly. It's almost as if you knew him. Not very difficult. You've allowed me to see through your eyes. Oh, that... You've allowed me to see a good many things. I knew a boy once, very much like your husband. He was a fine boy. He must have been. He'd been a fine man, too. Oh, uh, Mr. Fleming, I wonder if you could uh, come over here a moment, will yes, you? Yes, Mr. F- uh, Cavendish. Give this young lady a jar of my mixture. Uh, the heavy blend. Yes, and with an extra pinch of Turkish in it. I'll order it right away, sir. That was very good of you, sir. I feel embarrassed. You've been so kind. Not at all. This boy I knew, it was his blend of tobacco. Uh, just tell your husband it's from an admirer. I'll tell him, Mr. Cavendish. And I think this is the pipe for him. It's a good dark briar with a fine grain. He'll like it very much. I'm sure he will. We don't know how to thank you. Uh, please don't. It's been so very nice having a glimpse into your daughter's hearth. It's warm and cheery, and there's a, a good fire burning there. Thank you for asking my advice, young lady. I want to thank you, Mr. Cavendish. I want to thank you very much. Oh, it's I who should thank you. You've given me a very real and unexpected pleasure. Give your husband my best wishes and a very happy Christmas to you both. Oh, and a very merry Christmas to you, Mr. Cavendish. Oh, Mama. He must once have been very happily married. Why do you say that? Because I think he's all alone now. I think he's lost his son, too. Mom, I have a feeling David will love this pipe. I have a feeling that it will be his favorite pipe. A good dark briar with a fine grain and a tall bowl, deep and well-shaped and generous. Mama, would you mind waiting here for a moment? Where on earth are you going? To telephone. I, I'll be back in a minute, but I just, I just want to telephone to David. Oh, I just want to hear his voice. You know, sometimes it's frightening to be so much in love. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you say, welcome, what you're really saying is, it's well that you came. You can express the same thought without using words at all, just by bringing out a tray of ice-cold Coca-Cola. That says... Glad you came, and more. Its frosty refreshment is a silent invitation to pause, relax, and make yourself at home. Have you plenty of this welcome refreshment on ice for Christmas entertaining? Every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. (laughs) 